Welcome back to the Diana Initiative. We are counting down with our last few talks. And don't forget, the closing keynote will be over in track one at whatever time. It's after the next two talks. I think it's uh, 4.30. Um, somebody's nodding. Yes, it's at 4.30. Cool. Um, so we'll all head over there um, at 4.30. Um, today, or we are about to hear, and I'm looking forward to this one. I'm looking forward to all these talks. They've been great. Um, connecting dots between security teams and customer expectations. That has me very intrigued. I'm dying to hear this. Our speaker today is Shruti Kamath. And let me tell you a little bit about her because I do not believe there, she's doing an intro. Um, she has been heavily involved in computer security for nearly a decade. Her accomplishments including co-founding InfoSec Girls, a community for women passionate about information security. Very cool. She was an invited panelist at AppSec USA in 2015 for a discussion on encouraging di diversity and advancing cybersecurity education. Wow. Um, and is a Google grant winner for the H1TB Amsterdam 2016. So she speaks at lots and lots of conferences and workshops, and we are lucky that she is speaking to us today. So would you guys roll it? Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Shruti Kamath. I'm so excited to be here as a speaker today at the Diana Initiative Conference. As you can see, the title of my talk today is Connecting the Dots Between Security Teams and Customer Expectations to Deliver Outstanding Project Management Results. So on today's agenda, I'm going to be talking a little bit about me, what the problem statement is, what is that the customers are expecting, and what is that we as security teams do. And how is that you can meet customer expectations? Well, a little about me, I've been in the IT industry for about 10 years now and in the security domain for about seven plus years. I've worked as a developer, a security consultant, and I eventually moved into a client-facing role. I currently work as a customer success manager at AppSeco. AppSeco is an application and a cloud security specialist company. At AppSeco, we work with companies and organizations from various domains across the globe on a daily basis. I also co-founded InfoSec Girls, a community initiative that supports women in information security. It is now being led by a group of leads globally. Other than that, a year ago, I had started a podcast called The Stories of InfoSec Journeys. The podcast celebrates the stories of people in the information security community. The podcast guests talk about their journey, the learnings, challenges faced, and advice to the newcomers. I'm currently covering the stories from the Indian community. The podcast is also community partners with the conference. So do check it out and leave us a review. So today I'm going to be talking about my experience of working with customers and security teams and how through effective project management tips and tricks that I learned over time has helped in connecting the dots. And I think I can talk about this topic because I've worked in a security team and I've been on a customer facing role in the service industry. So I have a pretty reasonable understanding of what happens on both sides. So have you lived or heard stories of customers who are unhappy with the services provided because the security team did not provide what they were looking for? Well, if you have, then we've been on similar boats. Typically, these situations arise because there's a gap between what was promised and what was delivered. So what is that the customers are expecting? Let's say a customer is looking for a security service for their company. So what do you think this could mean? This could mean that they're just looking for pen test. It could also mean that they're just looking for someone to review their security setup. It could also mean that they're looking for someone to build the security program from scratch. So it's important to understand what is that the customer actually wants. And you need to know this, that what the customer is asking for and what they want can be very different. 
And the reason being sometimes they could still be figuring out what is that they're looking for or they could just be doing what they've been asked to do by their team or the management. So what is that we as security teams do? So we try to understand how their requirement fits into the list of services or products that are being offered by the organization. Or we ask the customers to avail the services and products that are currently being offered. And if none of this works, then you try to create a service that fits into their requirement. So when you do this, there are two outcomes. The client is really happy with what you've offered. We basically did what they asked for and now they love working with us and they will come back to working with us in the future. Or the other outcome could be that the client is not happy with the service or the product that was offered and it did not fully meet the expectations. So the expectations weren't met due to lack of communication or misunderstanding of the actual requirements or we were not clear enough on what is that they should expect from us. So here's a pictorial representation of so what was expected to what was delivered. So how is that you can meet customer expectations? So here are some key pointers I learned over time after being on a customer facing role. So the first one being understanding what is that the customer wants, right? And when I say this, what I'm trying to tell is that try to understand the reason for the requirement. Why is that the customer has a specific requirement and what is that we're trying to achieve through this requirement? Asking the why is the key here. So let's take an example, right? So they're looking for a pen test of an application. So ask them why is that they have this requirement? Is this for compliance purpose or is this for safeguarding of the data? So based on that, you can explain to them how your service is going to add value. And of course, that is going to make them feel assured that, you know, you have understood the requirement really well and you're going to do a good job of it, right? So let's take an alternative here of what happens when you don't do it, right? So when you don't do that in the same scenario of, you know, a customer asking for a pen test request. So you don't make that effort to understand why they have that requirement. And then you just offer them the standard services. There's a good chance that you will not be able to explain to them or understand the value add that your service can offer or for that matter even solve the problem that they're trying to solve right so by that it could also have an impact on the possible relationship building that could have happened with them so it's really important to understand what is that the customer actually wants so the next one I want to talk about is empathy. I cannot stress enough what an underrated skill empathy is, right? And when I'm talking about empathy here, what I mean is that trying to put yourself in the shoes of the customer and understanding how is that we can help them, right? Working with them as partners rather than as vendors and helping them in solving their pain points with regards to security. So I want to share a story here, right? So I had a customer we worked with who had a requirement of a cloud infrastructure to be tested and they were fairly new to the pen test process. So they're pretty much dependent on my team. So how we ensure being empathetic is by trying to, you know, be in the shoes of people who are fairly new to the pen test process. So we guided them at every step of the process and the engagement. We were there for them throughout, ensuring we answered all their questions. So by the end of the project, when we requested them for feedback, they were really happy with the work that we did for them. And they also told us that, you know, they felt like we were their partners rather than just another vendor who was handing out a report to them. Right. So they felt really assured and happy working with us. And that is why they told that it felt like we were their partners. So the alternative here would be not trying to understand the pain point from a customer point of view, and then just trying to assist based on what feels right for us. So by doing that, you're not really being empathetic towards the customer and trying to you know, understand their pain points and work with them in a way that is actually going to help them. So it's really important that you're empathetic towards your customers and understand what their problems are or what their pain points are with regards to security. All right. So the next one I want to talk about is going above and beyond. So when I say this, what I mean is that providing information to customers that add value to the service that you're offering or anything that can make their life easier or anything that makes them look better at their organization. 
So I want to share another story here. So we had like two different customers that uh, me and my team were working with. But the common thing that we had with both of these uh, customers were that they had a lot of apps that they wanted to test. And my team's job was just to ensure that these projects were getting executed and reports were getting delivered to them on time. But due to the volume of the work, it was getting very chaotic as a project execution. And that is when uh, my team decided to step up and plan the end-to-end -end execution and also made sure that we gave them regular updates. So why is this a value add? Because in this, one of the customer was fairly new to the pen test process. And the other one was a very busy client contact who couldn't take care of the project planning, you know, from an end-to-end -end point of view, right? So what we as a team did was that we stepped up and ensured that, you know, we went uh, above and beyond and offered them uh, assistance for the project planning till the project execution. So by doing that, we ensured that the project was successfully executed and providing the customer a very delightful experience. So when you don't really do that, your customers might just remember you as just another vendor whom they work with, right? So as my slide deck, you can see that says that uh, people will never forget um, how you made them feel, right? So because our customers received a very delightful working experience with us, they remembered us as people who we are, who are easy to work with. So that is why going above and beyond ensures that your customer has a delightful experience with you. All right, so the next one I want to talk about is regular communication and updates. And this is pretty much straightforward. So basically providing updates and communicating with your customers on a frequent basis because they could be planning their work based on your updates, right? So it's important that you provide them prompt and timely uh, updates with regards to the work or the project that you've been doing with them. So I want to take an example of a report delivery scenario here. So let's say there's a report that is due to be delivered tomorrow. And today is when you uh, figure out that, you know, there could be a potential delay in the report. So that is when you decide to uh, talk to the team and let them know that, hey, since, you know, we see a potential delay, I'm going to let the customer know that there's going to be a potential delay. And you go ahead and inform the customer that, hey, we see a potential delay in the report. We will try our best to, you know, get it delivered by tomorrow. But if that doesn't work, then please expect it, you know, the day after. And in case if you have planned any work based on this report delivery, you can plan it accordingly once the report is delivered. Right. So by doing this, what you ensure is that you gave them a timely update that there could be a possible delay. So, you know, they can plan accordingly with the next set of activities once the report is delivered. So let's take a scenario where, you know, you don't actually make that effort or initiative to inform the customer that there's a potential delay. And then you think of it like, hey, since, you know, the report is anyway due to be delivered tomorrow, um, I'm sure my team can ensure to finish it uh, by tomorrow, even though there's a delay right now. Right. And it's only tomorrow when you realize that for some reason the report is taking a little longer than expected to deliver and you have also not informed the customer, right? And now if you go and tell them that, hey, there could be a potential delay and they have planned activities based on the report delivery, of course, it is definitely going to leave them upset, right? So ensuring that you give them prompt and timely updates with regards to any communication with the work that you're doing with them ensures that the customers also updated and they are going to be happy about that you know you made that effort to give them a heads up so now they can plan accordingly right so it's important that you provide them with regular updates all right so the next one i want to talk about is direct honesty which is also like my personal favorite um, so here, what it means is that if you cannot help your customers with something that they're asking for, then just be honest about it. So by doing this, you're setting up everyone in the team for success and not promising on something that you can't deliver, right? So at my organization, we have customers who have requirements 
we cannot accommodate or timelines that we cannot accommodate. So we make it a point to inform them right away and be honest about it. And these customers have always appreciated it, right? So this is really helpful because it saves time for everyone. But by not doing so, uh, what happens is you agree on something and then when you don't uh, deliver it as per the plan or as per the expectation that was set, it definitely leaves the customer upset with also a bad experience, right? So it's important if you can be honest with the customers wherever and whenever required. So the next one I wanna talk about is constant check-ins and feedbacks. So feedbacks are extremely important and uh, it's important that you check in with your customers if they are happy with what uh, we are doing or if there's any work that we need to improvise with regards to our process or anything that we're currently doing for you, right? So it's important to do these check-ins with your customer on a regular basis. So some of the ways to do that would be by asking for an NPS because that helps you give clarity on what's working and what's not working. So NPS here stands for Net Promoter Score which is a metric that is used to understand customer experience and loyalty of the customers to the company. So it can be used as a predictor for business growth, right? Another way is that um, when you ask your customers for feedback and they come back to you letting you know that they have not been satisfied, right? It's important that you address those customers as well who have not been satisfied with the work you've done and asking them how is that we can delight them right so that's also an equally important step so taking feedback is one thing and addressing customers who have not been happy and making sure that they have a delightful experience that is another important aspect so let's say you know you don't make that effort to actually take uh, customer feedback because you know uh, assuming that they haven't provided any feedback that they have been working with us for the longest time um, so it also means that they're very happy with what we've been doing, right? So it's not necessarily the case that uh, just because they did not provide you a feedback uh, would mean that they're happy with you. So it's always a good uh, uh, practice to check in with your customers on a regular basis and ask them, have they been happy or is there something that we can improve or change, right? So. With that, it ensures that, you know, you have an understanding of what your customer expectations is and uh, you can work on accordingly. So I want to quickly summarize this talk by telling that next time when you're talking to your customers, I want you to keep these three things in mind is asking the why, making sure that you give them that assurance that you are being a partner and telling them that we're here to solve your problems and not point out your mistakes. And also having empathy and understanding that it's not just about the tech and making them feel assured that you're going to be there to guide them, right? Well, thank you for your time and thank you so much for attending my talk. If you want to connect with me on social media, I'm available on Twitter and LinkedIn. And here are my details. And also, if you're interested in tuning into my podcast, I've also shared the podcast details. You can also follow the podcast social media for regular podcast updates. Thank you so much for attending my talk.